The chi-squared test is an inferential test used to assess significance for data which is nominal and from independent samples. It's used to test for a difference between two conditions or an association between covariables. To demonstrate the chi-squared test, I'm going to use an example of a study. The data used here is fictional. Imagine a group of researchers want to find out whether males or females are more likely to comply with or obey a rule. The investigators choose to carry out an observation of drivers at a junction where there's a stop sign. The investigators watch unseen from the roadside and record whether or not each car that pulls up to the junction stops and whether the driver is male or female. Imagine they choose a quiet time so that drivers are not forced to stop because of busy traffic on the joining road. The null hypothesis for this investigation states there will be no difference or no association between gender and compliance with road rules. And the alternative hypothesis states that there will be a difference. The investigators might choose a non-directional hypothesis if previous research does not point them in a particular direction. Imagine the investigation finds the following frequencies and that the investigators observed 100 drivers in total. It's important for a chi-squared test that these are not converted into percentages but remain as frequencies. This type of table is called a contingency table and in this case is a 2 by 2 contingency table as there are two rows and two columns of frequencies. The chi-squared test compares the data you get from your investigation with what you would have expected to get if your null hypothesis was true and there was no effect going on. In this case, assuming gender has no association with complying with the road sign, we'd expect little difference between the number of male and female drivers stopping and not stopping at the junction. We need to calculate these expected frequencies for each cell in our table by multiplying the row total by the corresponding column total, then dividing the answer by the grand total. We'll label the cells to make it easier to follow. So for cell A, this is the calculation. This is the calculation for cell B. cell C, and cell D. This might look a bit scary, but it's actually a relatively simple formula for calculating the chi-squared value. This symbol means chi-squared. This is sigma and means find the sum of or add up and we'll work through the rest using the frequencies collected in the study and the expected frequencies that we've just calculated. We'll start with cell A and calculate the bit in brackets which is the observed value minus the expected value. Then we'll square it and then we'll divide by the expected frequency. I've rounded to two decimal places, but it's best to use the unrounded figure for the final part of the calculation. Do this all again for cell B. Cell C. And finally cell D. Now we need to take each of the four values we've just calculated and add them together. This value, 9.27, is our chi-squared value. Statistical tables contain a number of values. 
These p-values are the probability that our results are due to chance. A 0.05 level of significance, for example, means there's a less than 5% likelihood our results are due to chance. Chi-squared requires the degrees of freedom to be calculated. This is linked to the number of variables and is calculated by taking the number of rows minus 1 and the columns minus 1 and multiplying these two values together. These numbers are called critical values and we need our chi-squared value to be equal to or greater than one of these to reject the null. To use the table we also need to know if we have a one-tailed test which is when there's a directional hypothesis or a two-tailed test for a non-directional hypothesis. So now we can use the table to find out if gender is associated with compliance with road signs. It's conventional to use the 5% significance level and we had a non-directional hypothesis, so a two-tailed test. It was a 2 by 2 contingency table, so we have one degree of freedom. This means our critical value is 3.84. And we haven't had to work this out. The table tells us this is the value we need to be equal to or beat. We're comparing our chi-squared value of 9.27 with this critical value. And as 9.27 is larger than 3.84, we found a significant difference between males and females and their compliance with a stop sign. Writing this up for the results section of a report might look a bit like this. As the observed value, 9.27, is greater than the critical value, 3.84, we can reject the null hypothesis at the p is less than or equal to 0 0.05 level and conclude that there is an association between gender and complying with a stop sign. Descriptive statistics would tell us whether it was males or females that were more likely to stop. As we've accepted the alternative hypothesis, we would describe this as a significant difference. This means the difference between the observed values and the expected values was big enough to say that there's an effect. Contingency tables don't have to be two by two. This one has three rows. Whoops, skipped on too soon. So this one has three rows and two columns, so it's a three by two contingency table. So here are a few reminders about using and interpreting chi-squared. It's a test for nominal data from independent samples, and data is presented in a contingency table. It basically compares expected frequencies with observed frequencies and the chi-squared value is calculated using the formula. To find out if the chi-squared value is significant, we need to use the statistical tables to find a critical value by working out the degrees of freedom and selecting an appropriate probability value, usually 5%, and determining whether we have a directional or non-directional hypothesis. Chi-squared value needs to be equal to or bigger than the critical value in order to accept or reject the null hypothesis.